Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome and happy 2016 to you as always. It is our pleasure to stand before you once again for another Giants Banquet this year, the 34th Giants Banquet. I'm absolutely, isn't that awesome? I'm Jennifer Moss, local host of NPR's Morning Edition at WGVU Public Media. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eddie Rucker, marketing and media consultant, and it's good to be back again. 2016, I can't believe it, Jennifer. Back with Jennifer to host this 34th annual Giants Banquet. We hope you're ready for an exciting evening as we celebrate the accomplishments and contributions of the excellence of our individuals from the Grand Rapids area who have contributed so tirelessly to the community. During this Black History Month, we are so happy to be celebrating our 12 giants and, of course, a 13th giant of giants. This year, we recognize 12 exceptional individuals and or organizations as well for this outstanding contributions and accomplishments, again, to the Grand Rapids community. And as Eddie mentioned, of course, we wrap it up with the big surprise, because uh, we know who our 12 giants are, but we wrap it up with the big surprise of our giant among giants. Always so exciting. Um, at this time, though, we're going to move ahead with this part of the program. And so if you would please join me and stand as we sing the Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. It's performed tonight by Avalon Cuts Jones, vocal performance major, Grand Rapids Community College. Thank you, everyone. And now for our official welcome to the 34th Annual Giants Awards Banquet is the president of Grand Rapids Community College, Dr. Stephen Ender. Well, good evening, everyone. Good you know, I, I have prepared remarks, and I'll get into them in just a second. Um, so I've been at the college now for seven years, and I've been attending this event, I believe, every year. And a student asked me earlier tonight, um, why was this important? And my first reaction is, 
Why do you have to ask me that question? <laughs> but then, you know, as you reflect upon it, and I've lived in a lot of communities, uh, I've never attended an event like this in any other community than Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I believe because we do take a moment in time every year to recognize our giants, um, past and present, and those that will be uh, recognized in the future who are in this room tonight. I have no doubt about that. Uh, well, that's a special event in a special city, and it's something that I hope Grand Rapids Community College will continue to take leadership to make sure it goes on for many years to come. Now, we're not a city without problems. Uh, we know that our inner city has significant problems. We know that disproportionate numbers of black and Hispanic citizens are out of work, living in poverty, and struggling to get their children to school. But it's the people in this room that recognizes that and stands up and says, we need to say something about that and we need to do something about that. And that's why you're all giants. Um, I'd like to think that our community college is involved in that effort to help every citizen of this region have a quality of life that we all deserve and have a roof over our heads and have food to eat in good schools for our children to go to and to live in a nurturing neighborhood where we care about the person who lives next door to us. So why is this important to that student? It's because it takes giants to take us to places where we don't think we can get to. And I'm very proud and honored that our college plays an integral part in making sure this event goes on every year. And I'm also proud and honored that I believe our college takes active initiatives to try to help us all see a future different than the one we see today. Thank you, welcome. It is again my honor to be with you tonight. Thank you. Please help me welcome for our invocation tonight and welcome up to the podium Pastor Nathaniel Moody with Brown Hutcherson Ministries. I think you ought to give a better clap than that. <laughs> Shall we bow our heads? Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to take this opportunity to thank you for this wonderful occasion tonight, Lord. 34 years of this banquet being in this city and remembering those who have made lifelong experiences and one of the most important things, a pathway for others in this city. We thank you for the food that we're going to eat. May we fellowship tonight. May we have fun and enjoy each other's company and the food that we're going to eat. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. And now at this time, we're going to take a little pause. I want you to enjoy the delicious food that has been prepared for you. And we'll resume our program in shortly. Enjoy. And also enjoy the music by Entice. Okay? Thank you. I like your shoes. Thank you. <laughs> well, as we get ready to start the next portion of our program, we want to take a moment now to acknowledge all of our generous sponsors. Uh, who You can see them on the screen, and from year to year, they continue to support this uh, cause. 
A special thanks goes out to them as they help sustain our Giants program each and every year. So again, we want to thank them. You can see them on the screen. And I'm going to acknowledge our champion sponsors to start the Believe to Become initiative, Blue Cross Blue Shield of West Michigan, Fifth Third, Grand Rapids Community Foundation, Grand Rapids Kent County Convention Arena Authority, Grand Valley State University, Mercantile Bank, Mercy Health, Option One, Credit Union, Spectrum Health, and Steelcase. Those are our champion sponsors. And I'd like to acknowledge our patron sponsors. But before I do that, I just have to say, looking around this room, it is packed, first of all. So thank you for being here. And you guys look fabulous. You look so good. The men are handsome. The women are just gorgeous, beautiful. I see a lot of familiar faces. So the ones that have not been here before, welcome to the Giants Awards, OK? Our, our patron sponsors, Aquinas College, Calvin College, Davenport University, the law firm of Drew, Cooper, and Anding, Grand Rapids Education Association, Meyer, and those are our patron sponsors. While we are uh, passing out the thank yous, we do want, of course, always want to pass along a special thank you to Bing Goy uh, from Eastern Floral for all those beautiful floral arrangements each and every year. They are always amazing, always beautiful. So thanks to Mr. Bing Goy. Absolutely. Also acknowledging and thanking the Grand Rapids Press, MLive, and GRCC Media Department for their generous support of the Giants program as well. One of our key parts of tonight's program is the supporting of higher education with the presentation of the Milo Brown Scholarship. Please help us welcome Mrs. Laura B. Moody from the Grand Rapids Community College Nursing Program to announce our scholarship recipients. Good evening. It is indeed a pleasure to stand before you once again this evening on such a great occasion to recognize our scholarship recipients. And as always, I have to be able to see here a little bit. First of all, I would like to have a special thank you for Mr. Michael Johnson. If you could wave your hand out there, the owner of Brown's Funeral Home. And I also have with me my son, Kendrick Moody, who's also working at Brown's Funeral Home. Our first recipient for this evening is Mr. Sean Cummings. Could you come up, please? <laughs> Mr. Sean Cummings is a proud member of GRCC's Alpha, Beta, Omega Leadership Development Program and takes his role as a member very seriously. He is a man that never wants to stop learning. His letter of support stated, I find this man that never wants to stop learning is always a very hardworking, pleasant, and accommodating young man. He has overcome many challenges and seeks to help others to strive to achieve their goals by overcoming their obstacles. He is very encouraging and motivating. Sean has a very friendly and positive attitude that is very contagious. Sean is majoring in business management and has a 2.87 cumulative GPA. After graduation, he plans to attend Davenport University. Please join me in congratulating Mr. Sean Cummings. Our next recipient, Mr. David Mizma. <laughs> David is majoring in social work and has a GPA of 3.93. Let's give it up for him. He wants to specialize in mental health 
as he loves working with people with mental illness and or development disabilities. He is currently working part-time at Spectrum Continuing Care Community Services as a community living support staff. After graduating from GRCC, David plans to transfer to Grand Valley State University School of Social Work and one day wants to teach social work so he will always be learning about the field he loves. Please join me in congratulating Mr. David Misma. And our last recipient, Mr. Michael Rupert. Micah is majoring in computer programming, web development, and has a GPA of 3.688. His goal is to create an app and website that people will act, gravitate to and use frequently. In his letter of support, he is described as a member of the Alpha, Beta, Omega, extraordinary student. Micah is proactive, respectful, and a team player. Micah's math instructor described him as saying, Michael is very pleasant, he's a very wonderful student to teach, and always willing to learn. He maintained a positive attitude throughout the semester, even when things were hard for him. He encouraged other students in his class as well. Micah plans to earn an associate degree continue his education, and start his own business. Once again, please welcome and congratulate Mr. Micah Rupert. Once again, let's give it up for all of our recipients at this time. Thank you. At this time, before we move forward with the program, we have a very special treat. We are going to get to hear Avalon Cuts uh, present a solo for us at this time. So let's give her a welcoming round of applause, Ms. Avalon Cuts. <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus, oh, our sins and griefs he'll bear. What a privilege to carry every. God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. And oh, what needless pains we bear. Oh, all because we do, we do not care, care everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often we often forfeit and oh, what needless, needless pains we bear. And it's all because we do, we do not care. 
we don't carry oh yeah. everything to God in prayer oh, 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 oh just take it breathe to God in prayer. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 just take everything to God in prayer. Pray. Well, as we prepare and begin uh, our awards presentation for this, the 34th year, of course, of the Giants Banquet, let us acknowledge first those giants that had the vision to create this outstanding program. Ms. Pat Pulliam, and of course, in memoriam, our dear Cedric Ward. Let's recognize them, please. Thank you. They had a wonderful idea 34 years ago, and look at today. They started, and it was so small. I've been doing this for a long time, and I can tell you personally how much this event has grown from the GRCC Fieldhouse here to DeVos Place with hundreds upon hundreds of people. And I know many of you are witnesses to the same thing. Is that not a wonderful thing to see yes. how the impact has just expanded in Grand Rapids? It's amazing. I want to thank Avalon again for that beautiful song. Thank you. And give her another hand, please. We'd also like to take a moment and ask all of our former giants to stand that are present tonight so that you may be recognized as well. Please stand. All right. And Jennifer and I are already standing. We are two giant award winners. <laughs> Jennifer won the Raymond Tardy Community Service Award, and I myself won the William Glenn Trailblazer Award. So thank you. And one more thing. Pastor Moody said earlier to have fun. So make sure you're having fun. Are you guys having fun? Are you enjoying it? You're enjoying the music? I hope so. We start our giant presentations tonight, our award winners, our recipients, with the Floyd Skinner Justice Award. This year's Floyd Skinner Justice Award winner is quoted as saying she's driven by people who want to make a difference in the lives of others. Well, she too is making a difference. Ms. Kimberly Coleman is the executive director of the Grand Rapids Bar Association. A longtime resident and involved citizen of Lansing, she commutes to Grand Rapids as her second home, demonstrating her continued commitment and dedication to removing obstacles in many lives, obstacles that could keep people from moving forward. Her nomination noted that her influence and visibility extends nationally to young women of color, statewide to those involved in childcare services, and locally to organizations concerned with services for people with visual disabilities. She offers guidance in dispute resolution, legal assistance referrals, as well as economic development. She also helps welcome young professionals to the area. 
Kim's understanding of interpersonal and intergroup relations is essential to her success as she strives to enhance the skills of those that she assists in dealing with issues of racial, gender, and ability barriers. In addition to her work with the Bar Association, she also teaches civics, education, and career development classes to freshmen at Ottawa Hills High School. Let's hear more now from Kimberly Coleman. Good evening. What an amazing night it is for me. The joy and feelings of gratitude are indescribable. I must say that I'm honored to be in your company tonight, and, and I am pleased and yet humbled to accept the Floyd Skinner Justice Award. Know that I accepted recognizing the contributions of those receiving this award before me. The Honorable Benjamin Logan, Patrick Miles Jr., and the late Ingrid Scott Weekly, and many others such as Tracy Brame, Deborah Clatton, and Steve Drew have developed ideas, put them into action, and served as role models to the rest of us. I accept this award on behalf of all of those who have given their time and imagination to prepare the path I follow. And as I do so, I wish to thank the Giant Selection Committee and the Floyd Skinner Bar Association for making this night possible. I want to thank the Grand Rapids Bar Association family for being here tonight and for inviting me into the Grand Rapids community some 14 years ago. You know, over the years, we have touched many lives with hopes of touching many more. I extend my love and my gratitude to my husband. Melvin, you have touched my life in ways that you will never know. Thank you for helping me to be all that I am and all that is to come. Thank you to my mother, Rose, sister Gwen, my son and daughter, Marcus and Sheena, for your unwavering support and confidence throughout this journey. Thank you to my late grandmother, Corrine McLaughlin, who made certain we were able to build our lives on a solid foundation. You know, for as long as I can remember, I've always felt my purpose in life was to lift the voice of the voiceless, to open the doors of access and opportunity to those in greatest need, to serve the public in a way that allows me to reach the powerless and underserved. Civil rights organizer Ella Baker is remembered for saying, give light and people will find their own way. When I think about this quote, I'm reminded of my purpose. I'm inspired by the many lights that have illuminated my path, and I am blessed to be a light of hope and understanding to others. My sincerest thanks to all attending tonight and for the honor you have given me with the presentation of this award. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Floyd Skinner Justice Award winner, Ms. Kimberly A. Coleman. Our next award, the Walter Cole Public Service Award, is being presented to our first African-American female commissioner for the city of Grand Rapids, Mrs. Sunita R. Lanier. <laughs> Sunita's election to this commission is a natural result of her community involvement and commitment to public service. While employed with Blue Care Network, she volunteered countless hours within the community, in particular, mentoring young women. She combined her pursuit of her personal educational and career development with work for others. Her nomination reads, as Sunita continued to focus on self-development, she never lost sight of her burning desire to give back and to help change someone else's life. Her commitment to public service was evident by her position on the Grand Rapids Public Schools Board of Education prior to her election to the Grand Rapids City Commission. A nominator adds, Sunita combines a unique blend of personal passion 
and a clear community vision. Here now is Sunita. Thank you to my nominators, Tasha, Deb, Doretha, my Blues family, and especially my sister, Nicole, who is one of my biggest cheerleaders. Thank you to the selection committee for bestowing this honor upon me. Thank you to God who created me and has given me the will to serve this community. And thanks to the community for voting and having me to serve in the capacity as your commissioner. Thank you to my parents and grandparents, many of whom is no longer with us. I thank you for raising me and instilling values in me that has made me the woman that I am today. To my siblings, thank you for always remembering that I am the youngest. Thanks to my children who make me laugh and they make me proud, but especially they keep me humble. Thanks to my husband, the giant Dallas Lanier. He isn't perfect, but he is perfect for me. I thank you so much for encouraging me and believing in me and making sure that I stay in the race whenever it gets tough. As wonderful as our city is in so many ways, many of us are aware that there is yet a lot of work to be done. I wonder what would Mr. Cole think of Grand Rapids today? You see, he rose through the ranks of the GRPD to the level of captain. One other person has exceeded that level and none have become chief of police. That disparity and a few others that are listed on the screen are some of the disparities that exist in our community. So I'd like to challenge every business owner, every corporation, every financial and public institution and nonprofit to hire at your executive level positions, as well as your boards, African Americans, as well as other members, other people of color in this community. Especially if you receive funding or have a mission or receive grants that are designated to impact communities of color. I'd love to talk with anyone who's serious about making a difference in this area. That's why my contact information is on the screen. My goal is that in years to come, when someone is accepting this award, that the same disparities that I list here today no longer exist. Thank you again for this opportunity. Please enjoy your evening. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the 2016 Walter Cole Public Service Award, Mrs. Sunita Lanier. The basis or foundation of the Eugene Browning Medical Service Award is commitment to community and to the community's health needs. Dr. Herman Sullivan is doing just that in the Grand Rapids community. But even more than that, Dr. Sullivan has an important philosophy that has guided him for over 30 years as a medical professional. And it goes something like this, the secret to caring for patients is to care for patients. <laughs> Words to live by. And this is one of the uh, reasons he's being honored tonight. Dr. Sullivan received his academic and medical training through Harvard University and the University of North Carolina with additional postgraduate education at Case Western and Stanford. Currently, he serves as medical director, multiple sclerosis clinic, Howenstein Neuroscience Center, Mercy Health, St. Mary's. He's also an associate clinical professor, Michigan State University School of Medicine. Dr. Sullivan's medical focus is on improving and enhancing the lives of those dealing with neurological disease. As his nomination notes, the pathology of neurologic diseases is often different in populations of color particularly African-American populations. And thus, Dr. Sullivan has placed a priority on understanding this phenomenon and ensuring that African-Americans in our community and across the country are knowledgeable about the disease and receive the best treatment available. In addition to serving as president of the Board of Directors, Grand Rapids African-American Health Institute, Dr. Sullivan is an active member of the Michigan State Medical Society and lectures locally and nationally on the effects of neurological diseases. He is also the president-elect of Sigma Pi Phi Boulay, as well as president-elect of the Kent County Medical Society.
But his driving force is the love of family, especially his wife of 30 years, Roz, and sons, Noble and Alan, and of course, his mom, Susie. Here's Dr. Herman Sullivan with more. Good evening, family and friends. I would like to thank my dear friend, attorney Stephen Drew, and my colleague, Executive Director Shannon Wilson, for nominating me to receive this award. I would also like to thank my dear friend, Dr. Khan Ned, for asking me to be a part of the Grand Rapids African American Health Institute and the Diversity Center for bestowing this wonderful honor. On behalf of the Institute's Board of Directors, I am honored to receive the Eugene Browning Medical Service Award. The healthcare disparities that exist here in West Michigan are reflective of other parts of the country. It's not just unique to Grand Rapids. Poor access to healthcare providers, limited access to healthcare facilities, a paucity of healthcare providers who look like the patients they serve, along with a cemented relationship between socioeconomic status and healthcare outcomes, all of this contributes to the diminution of the quality of lives in African American communities here and elsewhere. The Institute has played a great role in highlighting these disparities, but just as important, it advocates for solutions to these problems. In my opinion, there are some simple steps that can be taken to begin reversal of what used to be trends but are now norms. First and foremost, we need more African American physicians, nurses, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, therapists, and administrators. I'm a numbers man. I'm a physician. I have to be, as we all should be, because numbers enlighten. If you have a blood pressure of 200 over 100, it doesn't matter if you don't believe in quotas. You have high blood pressure. If 16 to 23 percent of the population in the Grand Rapids area is African American, then the largest employees in the air, employers in the area, such as healthcare systems, should be employing close to 23 percent in all phases of their operations, including the C-suites. If it doesn't reflect that, then there's a problem. You have high blood pressure. Secondly, we should be embracing regional and statewide policies that improve the educational and economic outcomes of all citizens, not just the well-off. And if you have any question at all as to how state policies can affect health outcomes, just travel east to Flint, Michigan, and try to understand what they're dealing with. Thirdly, we must recognize that the healthcare systems we have today, they're living at the extremes. That is to say, we have the world's best technologies, right here, even here in Grand Rapids, with some of the worst outcomes. We need to do better. We need to bridge this gap. The numbers do not lie. Yes, we have, we have high blood pressure. So thank you for the honor and the privilege. I hope to serve the community even more than I have been able to thus far. An award like this only inspires me to do so. I'd like to thank my wife, Rosalind, my, my sons, Noble and Alan, for giving me the, the air under my wings to keep me moving forward. My mother and mother-in-law, having family underpinning you is a blessing. Thank you and good night. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Eugene Browning Medical Service Award winner, Dr. Herman C. Sullivan. You see, he kissed Jennifer on the hand. I said, I didn't get a kiss on the hand. <laughs> so he gave me one, too. Tonight, we are remembering a man who touched many young people's hearts and souls. Mr. Roy Ford is being presented the W.W. Plummer Humanitarian Award posthumously. His nomination overflows with heartfelt gratitude and love. He is described as a man worthy of imitation, 
a man who saw the value in every single child. He believed all children could succeed and embrace beautiful lives. He demonstrated this belief in offering himself and his time to coaching and mentoring children who played in parks near his home, offering direction and instruction, teaching about the value of individual power and resilience. He took it up on himself to create teams and drove many teams to other parks to compete, sometimes taking older teams out of state to play. His nomination says, Mr. Ford was committed to helping all, and we did not have to ask. He was an honest and trustworthy person. He walked and talked with integrity. He showed great leadership in a humble way. He was a good friend and family man. He was full of wisdom. He left his mark on us and many others. Although he has left us, he will always be in our hearts. Let's listen now to a message from his family. Hello, my name is Nicole Birch, and I am here to accept the Giants W.W. Plummer Humanitarian Award on behalf of my grandfather, Roy William Ford. My grandfather passed away on October 19th, this past fall, and my family and I miss him dearly. Our family is extremely honored that you have chosen him to receive this Giants Award. He would have been surprised, honored, and maybe even shocked. He was a giant in our family, so it's not a surprise that his legacy lives on. I like to share that which we believe were the things which made a kind, compassionate, and caring family man become a gentle giant and a mentor to so many. First, everyone is important. Everyone plays a part. Everyone needs encouragement. Everyone needs help at some time in their life, and everyone needs to know someone cares about them, that which is important to them. He knew the impact that one person can have on another person's life. He knew that you don't have to be wealthy to give people your time and attention. He knew you can't just talk the talk, you have to walk the walk. You don't have to be the best to do your best. And if time is money, then we all are wealthy beyond measure. Share a little of your time to make a difference in someone's life. Again, we want to thank you for the Giants Award. Roy Ford is surely smiling down from heaven tonight. The 2016 W.W. Plummer Humanitarian Award goes to Mr. Roy Ford posthumously. Our Ethel Co. Humanities Award winner is a woman who wears many hats, and she wears them all well. After graduating from Howard University as a history major, Clarice Drew quickly went on a trek to make her own history. She went from professional fashion model to fashion consultant on to a rewarding career in all spectrums of mass media. The nominator for Ms. Clarice Smith Drew reads in part, it says this, as I attended prior Giants banquets, I recall thinking to myself, Ms. Clarice Drew is worthy of notice and being included amongst the leading lights of the community. Ms. Drew and her unique combination of humor, caring, and skill in all forms of the communications, arts, merits, inclusion. And clearly everyone agreed. Ms. Drew is president of Image Counts, and she understands the transformative possibilities of culture and arts and the health of any community. In addition to her many and varied media productions, 
Ms. Drew also spearheaded an annual Spring Fling Fashion Show at St. Philip's Episcopal Church, an amazing event raising enough money to open the John M. Burgess Wellness Center, an important neighborhood health and wellness ministry with direct significant impact. Often it is remarked that Ms. Drew has an exceptional ability to bring together disparate voices for a common goal with all feeling welcome and included. Ms. Drew has served on the board of directors for the Grand Rapids Symphony, Grand Rapids Ballet, and Grand Rapids Arts and Letters. Let's hear more from Ms. Clarice Smith-Drew. Good evening. When the call first came that I was to receive the Ethel Cole Humanitarian Award, I thought, someone's playing a trick on me. To be honored for what you love doing just doesn't happen, which makes this the greatest honor of all. Born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, my parents raised my four siblings and me in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It was there as a little girl that I was awakened to the beauty of my culture. We had our own library, hospital, movie theater, and neighborhood stores. We learned that there was nothing that we couldn't do. My mother, Mary Smith, an elementary school teacher, nurtured the creative side of me. She realized early on that I liked fabric, so she collected scraps of material for me and bought a machine. I can still feel her long, nimble fingers guiding me as she taught me how to sew. My father, Thomas Smith, Jr., was an Episcopal priest and a civil rights activist who demonstrated the power of our voice from the pulpit to the picket line. I learned from the example of his relentless courage as he marched with Martin Luther King and oft times shared his pulpit with the young Jesse Jackson, all the while death threats became a routine part of our family life. It is because of my parents that I learned the importance of values, education, and kindness, not to mention etiquette books of which I read nearly every one that there was when I was in junior high school. My maternal grandparents demonstrated the importance of balancing a strong work ethic and the love of family. My grandmother, Ethel Mae Jackson, who cleaned houses for a living, always carried herself with dignity and commanded respect. My grandfather, Leslie Jackson, a cook for Norfolk and Western Railroad, was a brilliant storyteller who never learned to read. From them, I learned that self-respect should never be compromised. All of these influences have shaped and guided my loves from fashion to media and many things in between. For all those that played a role in my receiving this treasured honor, the Giants Committee, and my dear friend, Ross Sullivan, who nominated me. I thank you. To my children, Thomas and Sahara, and my children through marriage, Ricky, Stevie, and Anthony, and our four grandchildren, I am incredibly proud of all of you. And to the one person who has inspired me more than any other because of his wisdom, compassion, and patience, the 27-year love of my life, my husband, Stephen. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Ethel Cole Humanities Award winner, Ms. Clarice Smith-Drew. Our next award being presented is the Milo Brown Business Award. It's being presented to Mr. Scott Welch. Scott is the founder and managing partner of Global Bridge Builders, an organization created to use the experienced team approach to focus on processes intended to build cultural competency and implement inclusion initiatives. He has been a community activist all of his life. 
His most recent program brings him back to his childhood neighborhood in the form of the Mosaic Film Festival, celebrated at Wealthy Theater. Mosaic is an introduction for children to the opportunities and excitement around filmmaking, writing, and their own creativity. The program's vision is caring and creating the next generation of storytellers, one community at a time. Scott also was a co-host of Radio in Black and White, a weekly program with the goal of developing new language, thinking, and perspective around issues with significant racial connotations. His nomination reads, Scott Welch has a passion for creating community spaces where diverse people can gather. Thank you so very much for this honor. And also know that I receive this as a type of responsibility as well. I'm truly grateful to the Lord for giving me the opportunity to serve people in their organizations in a capacity that is both challenging and a lot of fun. I'm blessed to have been born into a family where support, encouragement, love were without measure and where excellence was the standard. And I wanna thank my guests and my family that have joined me here tonight. I'd like to recognize and thank my beautiful, brilliant and patient wife of 22 years and counting, Barbara, for being such an amazing gift to me, as well as my princess and exceptional daughter, Brooks. This particular business award reminds me that any impactful life is a life that has been positively impacted by others. It further reminds me of the wonderful and innovative heritage that I come from as an African-American, as well as connects me even further across the waters to my ancestors who defined innovation by creating such majestic wonders as the pyramids. Finally, I would like to encourage us all as members of the West Michigan community to be relentless in building a legacy of entrepreneurship and prosperity that truly represents the mosaic. Thank you. It is with honor I present to you the Milo Brown Business Award recipient, Mr. Scott Welch. This year's Phyllis Scott Activist Award winner is celebrating its 35th year working with young women from the ages of 5 to 18. This award specifically cites the work of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority with the Ivy Let program. It's an eight-month personal development initiative culminating each year with a debutante presentation gala. Volunteers work as advisors to the participants, helping each individual develop leadership skills, enhance their compassion for each other, and instill the seeds of volunteerism and activism. The program and the advisors recognize the pressures common to young people today and design topics to address how to respond to negative stress. Some of the issues discussed recently have been body image, implications of social media activity, physical fitness, and college preparation. Each month, volunteer opportunities are offered to the Ivy Lets. Depending upon age and maturity, Ivy Lets have worked with Kids Food Basket, social justice events such as the Teen Summit, and they participated in educational forums around healthy relationships. The nominator notes many prior Giants honorees have been previous Ivy Let advisors. Let's take a look as we hear more from the sorority. Good evening. The members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Theta Chi Omega Chapter, would like to thank the Giants Award Committee for selecting our Ivy Let Rosette program for this prestigious award. The Ivy Let Rosette program has been in existence for 35 years. Since that time, the program has grown to over 100 young women in grades kindergarten through 12th grade. I am Chanel Williams, a senior at Grand River Preparatory High School and an Ivy Let since the third grade. 
The Ivy Led program promotes sisterhood among young ladies. I've also developed great leadership skills. I'm Savannah Walker, an eighth grader at the East Grand Rapids Middle School and an Ivy Let for five years. The Ivy Let program encourages me to go out to serve the community and it builds strong relationships with other young women. I'm Kaylee Storcy, a fifth grade student at Brookwood Elementary School and an Ivy Let for three years. The advisors teach and prepare us for when we get older. I'm Avery Pulsa, a first grader at Excel Trader Academy, and this is my second year at Avery Rosette. And I like when we get to go places and make things. Thank you to all the parents who allow us to provide programs and opportunities for our awesome young women. We especially want to thank all of the advisors over the past 35 years who have dedicated countless hours, talents, and resources to support our young women. Congratulations, Congratulations to all the giant awardees tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Phyllis Scott Activist Award winner, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Theta Chi Omega Chapters, Ivy Let Rosette Program. The William Glenn Trailblazer Award goes to a woman described by her nominator as a woman of first, Ms. Francine B. Gaston. Entering the financial banking world originally as a bank teller in the summer, Francine ultimately became Old Kent Bank's first female African-American branch manager, first African-American assistant vice president, and finally, first African-American vice president. Along the way, Old Kent Bank became Fifth Third Bank, and Francine excelled in each position, dedicating herself to removing barriers and building a stronger community through financial literacy and increased access to resources. She echoed the advice of her parents, whatever you do, do it well, and bring someone else up with you when you succeed. Being aware of both the needs of an underserved community and the needs of an industry for a greater diversity within its own employees, Francine has always had related parallel goals. Her passion for development and outreach is apparent in her community activism, such as Dwelling Place and Genesis Nonprofit Housing Corporation board memberships. As her nominee notes, Francine makes things happen. She brings people together. She questions, she encourages, and she leads. Here's more from Francine. Good evening. I'd like to thank the Grand Rapids Community College Giants Committee for bestowing this honor upon me this evening and Fifth Third Bank for their nomination. I am honored and excited to be selected to receive the William Glenn Trailblazer Award. Receiving this award inspires me to continue to work as a mentor for African Americans within the workplace and to seek more opportunities to make an impact within my community. Being here tonight to accept a Giants Award is a very humbling experience that I never imagined. I've had a wonderful journey being able to live out my passion of mentoring and assisting individuals with achieving their financial goals. I've also been blessed to have wise, intellectual, and spiritual individuals in my life, from the mothers in the neighborhood when I was a child, to the mentors, colleagues, and friends in my adult life. As it has been said, it takes a village. To my village, I humbly express my sincere appreciation for your willingness to walk beside me and allow me to do what I do. 
To my parents, the late Mr. and Mrs. Frank Williams, thank you for sacrificing so much so my brothers and I could have an opportunity to dream and realize our dreams. To my Fifth Third family, thank you for providing the resources, opportunities, and support that I receive each and every day. To my True Light family, thank you for your spiritual guidance. And to my family and friends, thank you for keeping me grounded and for your continued loving support. Thank you again, for I am truly honored to receive the William Glenn Trailblazer Award this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2016 William Glenn Trailblazer Award goes to Ms. Francine B. Gaston. Our Raymond Tardy Community Service Award winner has actively led and participated in numerous community initiatives that cut across many sectors, audiences, and missions. This giant is actually qualified to be a recipient in any number of categories. The committee chose community service because of the breadth and depth of his community activities. Mr. Wayman Britt is Assistant County Administrator for Kent County. In this role, he led the establishment of the Kent School Services Network, aligning various community services to support students in 31 schools and eight school districts. He improved adult guardianship services to provide for indigent clients. He established a partnership that provides direct dental and oral surgery care for low-income patients. As a community activist, Mr. Britt chaired the Grand Rapids Community Foundation, creating the Challenge Scholars and served as the facility chair for the Grand Rapids Preparatory Academy. His supporters say that, quote, he is a leader that others want to follow. He is approachable, honest, and consistently offers optimism and integrity. Here's Wayne. I am who I am because of what I was when. Or in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, we're not makers of history, but we're made by history. During the 60s, my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Wall, said to me, I want you to be a leader. Now, I didn't understand what she meant by that at the time, but it has stuck with me, and it's now become an important part of my life. I've been a professional athlete, a banker, an employee relations manager, a production supervisor, and now I'm an assistant administrator for the county. Each of these roles has taught me the importance of being a leader and serving others. Raymond Tardy set the bar high as a leader and one who served others. Who would have thought that one day I would be recognized as someone who served like him? I'm so very grateful to those who nominated me to receive this award and special thanks to my family, my friends, and those I work with every day who inspire, encourage, and motivate me to be the best that I can possibly be in serving others. Thank you so very much for this award. Our 2016 Raymond Tardy Community Service Award winner, Mr. Raymond Britt. still awake out there? I just heard, all right. I just heard someone say, go blue. I, I was surprised somebody said, go green. <laughs> Our next award is the H.C. Tolliver Religious Life Award. It's being presented to Ms. Carolyn Allen, who's an evangelist, 
the Messiah Baptist Church Assistant Minister of Music, a gospel music teacher, a featured music soloist, and an energetic community contributor. In many religious lives, church worship is synonymous with music and song. Carolyn has been living that life of musical dedication through her own performance and direction and encouragement of others, in particular, area youth. She sings as a member of Deborah Perry and Majestic Praise and was a featured soloist with the Grand Rapids Symphony. And if you have not had the pleasure of hearing her angelic voice, you can experience it with her CD titled Grateful. She recently earned her master's degree in ministry leadership. Carolyn is the embodiment of the value of music in our lives. As Plato said, music is a moral law. It gives soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and charm and gaiety to life and everything. Let's hear more now from Carolyn. First and foremost, I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for it is in Him I live, move, and have my being. I would like to thank Mansfield Matthewson for nominating me and the Committee of the Giants Award for considering me for the H.C. Tolliver Religious Life Award. To have my name listed along with the previous honorees is something I do not take lightly. I thank my covenant partner, my husband, Harry Allen, for being my covering and supporting me in the work of the ministry. I accept this award in memory of my late father, Pastor Leroy Quinn, who taught me that only what you do for Christ will last. And to my mother, Mrs. Penny Quinn, who cannot be here tonight, she's a shining example that even when you're faced with adversity, that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. I'm so honored that my siblings could be here tonight and so many of my family and friends. Lastly, this award has encouraged me even the more to be kingdom focused and purpose driven in my quest to fulfill the mandate of Matthew 25, 40. For there was a time I was one of those who would be considered to be the least of these. So wherever I see hunger, loneliness, or despair, then I am to be the change agent of that same grace that I've been, that's been shown to me. Thank you and have a great evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2016 H.C. Tolliver Religious Life Award goes to Miss Carolyn Allen. Well, there are multiple ways to evaluate the value of education. Dr. Nkeche Eze's life is a reflection of these variations, recognizing both personally and for others the intellectual and economic significance of education. She understands that education encourages imagination and creativity while stimulating moral growth, leading to acceptance and understanding. Born in Nigeria, Dr. Eze completed her first degree with Grand Rapids Community College, then both bachelor and master's degrees through Grand Valley State University, culminating in a doctorate in education from Nova Southeastern University. Currently, Dr. Eze is founder and CEO of Early Learning Neighborhood Collaborative, ELNC, initially made possible through funding from the Kellogg Foundation, and she is an associate professor of education with Aquinas College. Dr. Eze's accomplishments are many, particularly focused on the crucial early years of a child's life. Her expertise has guided ENLC to open 14 preschool classrooms serving 336 children who did not have previous access to preschool. That is amazing, isn't it? Dr. Eze notes, ELNC is about children and seeing children realize their potential. We have to get these children, she says, ready for kindergarten and get them ready for life. 
impacting the lives of so many and helping children realize their potential. Let's hear more from Dr. Esse. Thank you. I am greatly humbled and honored to be receiving this Giants Award named for Hardy Beverly. I truly believe that if we weren't for the grace of God and intercession of our Blessed Virgin Mary, I would not be here today. I want to offer my sincerest gratitude to Dr. Juan Olivares, Dana Bowles, and Jackie Nichol for nominating me. I did not make this journey here alone. Numerous people have supported me along the way. First, my beloved father, mentor, and life coach, who taught me to carry on beyond my imagination. It was my father who taught me never to accept the status quo and to challenge old ideas, especially when they don't appear to be working. To my mother, who stood behind the scenes, gently nudging me forward and giving me her silent permission to create my own path. To Mrs. Audrey Mayfield, Dr. Vida Tucker, and Mrs. Mary Trice of Grand Rapids, Michigan, who sold the seed of advocacy in me. They hired me to run the first African-American early childhood program at Messiah Baptist Church. This experience allowed me to see the possibilities in our children and that when surrounded with a quality environment and caring staff that they can emotionally relate to, the sky is the limit. To Dr. and Mrs. Sidney Bailey III and Mrs. Anita Christopher, who showed me what reaching your God-given potential could look like for black children in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Their children's milestones became a yardstick for me as my children were growing up. To Dr. Margot Clifford, Reverend Sister Mary Navarra, and Dr. Jim Graflo of Aquinas College, who exposed me to the world of academia and tried to shelter me from unintentional bias. To Sharon Killebrew, who taught me not to be petty, but to trust and believe in the inner soul of vulnerable families. To Nadia Brigham and Shanae Edmond Verley, who guided me through the good, the bad, and sometimes ugly times of my journey as an imagined indigenous leader. To my family, both in Nigeria and America, for letting me be me. A special thank you to my husband, Pius Eze, for always supporting me. And to all who believed in me and supported me throughout my journey, thank you. Last but not least, to my very own children, Onyinye MK, Obina, KK, <clears throat> Nena, and Nikki Eze, who unknowingly became my child development lab subjects. They allowed me to test out child development theories on them. My children are my heart, and I carry them in my heart every day. In conclusion, I want to again say how grateful and humbled I am to receive this award, especially knowing that I work every day with teachers and staff who are equally deserving of this award. With that said, I accept this award on their behalf and renew my commitment to never stop being a loud voice on behalf of vulnerable children until they have the same early educational opportunities as their more affluent peers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Hattie Beverly Education Award winner, Dr. Nkeche Eze. Our next giant award 
comes to a man that's described as a man who is dedicated to his work, diligent precinct delegate, and a union activist. Mr. Richard Jackson is our Martha Reynolds Labor Award recipient this evening. Richard is a full-time bus driver with the Rapid, president of ATU Local 836, an active member of the Grand Rapids chapter of the A. Rudolph Institute, which he recently relaunched locally, and a business owner, as well as a student. Richard's activism extends beyond protecting and supporting the needs of workers and reaches into the needs of the community as well. His nomination reads, he has been unyielding in his pursuit of economic justice for his membership, standing up boldly in defense of their retirement benefits. He exhibits humility, passion, and professionalism. Richard also concern, is also concerned for those who rely on public transportation, asking for more accountability and equitable, fair policies. In his undertaking, he has rallied a diverse group of voices, Grand Rapids Symphony members, Grand Valley State University students, faith leaders, and elected officials to stand with the bus drivers and mechanics. He is a collaborator to protect workers' rights. Richard's nominator says, while facing unprecedented attacks on the middle class here in Michigan, Richard planted a flag in the ground in the Grand Rapids area and said, we will not be moved. We can't do this alone. We hear now more from Mr. Richard Jackson. I was once told never to take wooden nickels, they don't spend, by someone very instrumental in my life. That saying had a huge impact on me and my worldview. To me, it meant taking ownership of what we want and deserve, not what some would allow us to have. So this award I humbly accept and share with the members of Amalgamated Transit Union, Local 836, USAS, and the entire labor movement, all of which are committed to being the change we wish to see. I bid you love, peace, and prosperity. Thank you. It is with honor I present you the 2016 Martha Reynolds Labor Award winner, Mr. Richard Jackson. Everybody having fun still? Are we ready? One of the biggest highlights, of course, of the night, the grand finale. You know, over the years, my efforts to keep you in suspense and all of that gets harder and harder because it just, it just does. One of my favorite games with our family is catchphrase. It's a game of quick thinking, you know, shouting out clues. You have to guess in 30 seconds the word and that kind of thing. So here's our bonus round. Tonight's category, of course, giants, or actually giants among giants. So we're going to start the clock. Here's a couple of clues. The 2016 giant among giants is called bold, courageous, a leader, honest, and credible. And everybody's sitting there going, hmm, that could be me. Is it me? Could it be me? All right, let's cut to it. Here we go. Leading a system with nearly 18,000 students and 4,000 employees demands a variety of skills and strength and is worthy, a worthy example of the definition of Giant Among Giants Award honoree. The nominator wrote, our superintendent, Hint, hint. Our superintendent is bold and courageous, a community leader, a listener, a collaborator, and one of our community's own as she drives fundamental and extensive change. I don't need to go on. You know this lady. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Giant Among Giants, Superintendent Teresa Weatherall. Yeah. Oh, 
Beautiful. Good evening. It is uh, both an honor and a privilege to stand before you today to receive this prestigious award. I'd like to first thank the Giants nominating committee, President Steve Ender, and my chief of staff, Larry Johnson, because I know it's because of him that I stand here. <laughs> but I also want to thank the Giants that stood here before me. We stand here today because of those that stood before us. Congratulations to the other Giant recipients tonight, but I'd like to take time to thank people in my life. Behind every wonderful leader, great leader, there is a great team. I want to thank my cabinet members, my Board of Education members, both present and past, administrators in the Grand Rapids Public Schools, support staff, the wonderful teachers in the Grand Rapids Public Schools. So many of them are here tonight. I want to thank you. Thank you for allowing me to lead you. And then I want to thank my community partners. We cannot educate children without all of you. Thank you to the parents, but most importantly, thank you to my students for allowing me to be their superintendent. I also want to thank my family, my husband, my children, my grandchildren, and my siblings. They literally plan their lives around Grand Rapids Public Schools and what I can and cannot attend. And I thank them for being flexible. Because to lead a system, to do what's best for children, it does take a community. I will be brief, but I want you to know, 150 years the district has been around. I am the 17th superintendent of this wonderful system. And the cliche, it takes a village to raise a child, is so true. But it not only takes a village, it takes a village of caring, respectful, loving people to raise children. And that's our role. During this time of social injustice across this nation, in our very own state, we need to do all that we can to educate children. That is our responsibility, to show them love and to educate them, because education is the greatest equalizer. I want you to know, absolutely. The children we raise today will lead us tomorrow. It is up to us. And then finally, I want to leave you with a quote from Nelson Mandela. And he says, there is no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way in which it treats its children. Once again, I thank you for this honor. It is truly my privilege to be here to accept this award. Thank you. Congratulations to the superintendent and to all the giants tonight. Congratulations to all of the giants. Let's give them all a hand, please. <clears throat> right now, I'd like to also acknowledge and recognize any elected officials that are in our audience tonight and dignitaries. Thank you for your service. And if you would kindly stand, if you're still here, please stand. I know you're still here. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your service. Right now, I'd also like to do a program acknowledgement. 
and our wonderful Ms. Chris Arnold, Director of the Bob and Alicia Woodrick Diversity Learning Center and Chair of the 2016 Giants Committee, please come to the podium. Good evening. On behalf of Grand Rapids Community College and the Bob and Alicia Woodrick Diversity Learning Center, again, we would like to thank you all for being here tonight. Can you believe it? 34 years of this um, wonderful event acknowledging so many giants in our community. It's pretty awesome. Again, for all of our sponsors here tonight, thank you. We really appreciate your support, not only for, for the Giants, but for many of the initiatives that we have throughout our community. And I'd like to recognize the Giants Committee because they work very hard and we start planning almost when this, this event is over. So I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our committee. Faye Richardson-Green, where are you, Faye? We got get Giants members to stand. Vanessa Green, Clee Jackson, Larry Johnson, Tempe Mann, Darius Quinn, Shannon Wilson, and Jennifer Smith. Takes a lot to put an event like this together, so thank you all. And all the volunteers here tonight, and some of you may have had a chance to meet some of our um, wonderful hosts, our ABO students and some of our student leaders at, at GRCC and ABO students from GRCC as well as Davenport University and the GRCC media department. And again, all the volunteers here tonight, the Amway staff for a great meal. And there are, um, again, there are so many individuals working throughout our community uh, to make sure that we all feel a part of this community, that we have an inclusive, welcoming community. So there are some things happening, but as, as others have mentioned, we do have a long ways to go as a community. So we have to keep working on that. Um, I'd like to, to extend a special thank you to the Kent County Convention Arena Authority and our wonderful diversity inclusion committees who are here tonight. And I have a privilege of being part of that work. And um, Eddie Tadlock, I know you're here, Eddie. There's Eddie and um, Eddie with SMG and also a part of our, uh, our committee. And um, I'd also like to acknowledge Faye Davis, Weatherall Davis. Faye, where are you? She's up here celebrating with her sister. Um, Many of you know Faye, and Faye has been a part of Giants for many years and, and has been part of um, making Giants grow to what it is today. So um, just wanted to acknowledge Faye and thank her for all her support through the years. And um, also would like to acknowledge Ms. Jennifer Moss and Ms. Eddie Rucker for their support for many years. And certainly our Giants would not be the same without them. So we have some wonderful bouquets to acknowledge them and thank them with. And again, congratulations to all the Giants tonight. And you can't leave yet because we have some pretty awesome door prizes. So you're going to hear about those next. Thanks again and um, thank you for being here. Okay, so if you haven't had a chance to get in your little ticket, please, um, this is uh, your last chance to get your ticket in for the door prize. Thank you, Chris. Let's give Chris another round of applause. She works tirelessly on this event every year, along with her committee. She does an excellent job. So we're going to get started with the door prizes. We're catching up uh, any remaining tickets. Uh, we'd like to have those. Um, we're going to start with a few descriptions of the, uh, the uh, surprise prizes, because you know, some of them are up here and some of them are behind here. So I want to let you know what those are. Okay, so don't go anywhere. I see some people looking like they're leaving out the door. Don't, you gotta get these prizes. The first one is a custom frame lithograph by nationally known artist Charles Bibbs. This 3D multicolored work is titled Music Maker, and it depicts a woman playing a stringed instrument. It measures 40 by 28 with custom mat and glass and is ready to hang. The value? $475.
And do we have a winner? And the winner is Frank Lynn. Frank Lynn. <laughs> Our next prize is a limited edition lithograph by artist Kenneth Gatewood. It's a number 46 out of an edition size of 650, and it's sold out. Uh, God's Blessing is the title. It's a beautiful portrait of a mother and baby and measures 24 by 30 in a gold frame with a linen mat and glass ready to hang, value $495. And the winner is? And the winner is Samuel Milkins. It doesn't say Milkins. It's either Milkins or Mickens. Now I know I sound Mickens, but this C looks like an L, and I have glasses on. <laughs> so it is Milkins. Mickens. It is Mickens. I should know that. You look just like your dad. Huh? <laughs> That's good. Okay, the third prize, a custom frame lithograph by Lonnie Oliveri. It is titled Too Tight, which shows a young sister braiding a brother's hair. This piece is 30 by 20 in a decorative matches, matching frame with matte and glass and ready to hang as well. Value, $195. If I'm reading this correctly, the winner is Jasmine Lee. Jasmine Lee. Next, we have a custom frame lithograph by Norman Rockwell. His iconic illustration is titled Golden Rule. Uh, this inspirational piece shows people from every nation and it debuted in 1961. Custom framed in a gold frame uh, with a triple mat and glass fit for hanging, value $165. <laughs> yep. And the winner is Sonia Forte, or Fort. All right. Our next prize is a 12 by 24 abstract oil painting on canvas. The image suggests a woman in repose, bronze frame, ready to hang, value $75. I know this lady, Diane McMillan. <laughs> Next up, we have a framed photograph by Art Prize award winning artist Monroe Aki O'Brien. Aki is the 2016 or 2015 2D Drawer's Choice Victor for his. Realistic Neglects Photography Series. This piece, Blue Sister, is an intimate portrait and shows the range of this up and coming artist, modern framing and matte with hanger, value $300. And the winner is Jimmy Carter. Address. <laughs> That was Jimmy Carter, did you hear me? Okay. The next prize is Marvel Universe Live. It's Saturday, April 2nd, 2016 at 11.30 a.m. Marvel fans assemble 
Marvel Universe Live is taking the live entertainment experience to a whole new level with an epic show unlike anything else you've seen before. Watch your favorite Marvel superheroes, including Spider-Man and the Avengers, including Iron Man, Black Widow, Hulk, and more. And sinister villains come to life in an action-packed arena performance. Come into Grand Rapids to Van Andel Arena. And the winner is... Jamisha Adams. Is Jamisha here? <clears throat> the next prize is Menopause the Musical, DeVos Performance Hall, Tuesday, April 5th at 7.30. Menopause. Tickets. <laughs> Tickets. <laughs> Tickets. And the winner is John C. Smith. <laughs> Congratulations. Now, now I know I know all about the play, but I know uh, some people probably thought of climax that song, "Men All Pause." When, remember that song? I know Joe Jones remember that. <laughs> okay, the next prize: two tickets to Tyler Perry's Medea on the Run at DeVos Performance Hall, April tenth, two thousand sixteen. Medea. Uh, the winner is Irma Menches. Men Menches? And the next prize is two more tickets to Tyler Perry's Medea on the Run. That's some good prizes. And the winner is Deborah Perry. Congratulations to all the prize winners. We would like to give a special thank you right now to George Bayard, owner of Bayard Arts Consulting and Frame Shop, for all of his contributions. Thank you. And now it's time for the benediction for tonight. Will Pastor Nathaniel Moody please return to the stage? As we prepare to close tonight, I'd like to give you a quote from one of my favorite philosophers, none other than Nathaniel Moody himself. <laughs> we have come, we have clapped, we have laughed, we have shared each other's company, and we have celebrated those giants who have received their awards tonight on this 34th celebration. So would you please kindly stand as we remember the giants before us and the giant of giants tonight who will take the lead in 2016. Look at your neighbor next to you. I would say kiss the neighbor to your left, but it might be somebody you don't want to kiss. <laughs> but just look at him and say, we came tonight. We've enjoyed dinner and we've enjoyed your company. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for the meal. We thank you for tonight. We pray that all will go their homes to their different places and that they will get there safely. We ask for your grace and mercy over each and every one of us this evening. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who rests, rule and abide with us all now, here and forevermore. Let all the church people say amen. amen. It should have been louder.